Hello everyone, while watching cricket test matches, it happens a lot of many times. Like we are seeing this particular result on to our TV screen. India leading by 300 runs, India trailing by 200 runs. Similarly, into advance equal, there is this lead and lag function. So when do we use this lead function? Whenever we need to deal with the rows which are below the current row, we use the lead function and similarly whenever we need to deal with the rows which are above the current row which we are operating on we need to use the lag function there so friends we'll understand this particular function into lot of more detail with the help of the data sets and on to the sql server management studio <laughs> Before moving forward, don't forget to hit the like button and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't and I'll be bringing much more different videos onto the advanced SQL concepts. Let us jump over to my screen. So friends, for this video, you can see this data set available here. So I'll be presenting the lead and lag function with the help of two data sets. First of all, we'll be operating onto this particular data set which you can see here and also I have imported both of these data sets onto my SQL Server Management Studio. You can see onto the the output the data set here I'll be quickly be explaining what are these data sets telling about and what do we need to calculate for each of these data sets which are present here so this is our very first data set here so you can see onto the column a I have the train number onto the column B I have the station name and onto the column C I have the time so for example train number 22863 will be at Howrah station at this particular time similarly train number as 12262 will be at Bilaspur station at 1505 time we need to calculate so the very first metric which we need to calculate here is time to the next station so we need to present here onto the next column and we want to know what is the time until the next station arrives and similarly for the second number thing what we need to calculate is the time elapsed till now so since the time the journey has started how much time has been elapsed from that particular time so we need to calculate this particular two columns here with the help of the lead and the lag function we will be seeing into much more detail on to our sql server management studio and believe me these are some of the real data sets i have captured from the irctc website see writing our query for obtaining these two particular columns here so the very first thing which we need to calculate is time to the next station so what does this column mean so for example into this particular row we'll be considering here and let us say we need to calculate time to the next station column so what does this column data is all about so for example let us say this particular row here so we need to calculate the difference between the time which is present into this particular cell and into this particular cell and i need to present here so for example i want to get the difference between c3 and c4 so let us see whatever the result would come up so this particular data i want and similarly for this Kharagpur station i want to get the difference between this particular time and this particular time so this particular column will tell me about the data of the time to the next station so how much time is left until the next station is arriving so friends we need to get this particular column here and we'll be seeing how do we get this particular column with the help of the lead or the lag function also you can see there are two different train numbers which are present here so one is 22863 and the other is 12262 so we need to calculate the same thing like the time to next station for both the train numbers so obviously the timing to the next station would be different because there are different trains so we'll be using the partition by concept so i've made a detailed video on to the partition by concept and how to use that particular concept so you can watch that particular video also so let us see writing this particular query and how to get uh, this column here so i'll just be dealing so into this particular details table i have all the train data you can see here so i'll be using this particular table here i'll just comment this out and let us start writing the query so first of all i want everything and on to the next column i want to get the time to next station so how do we get that 
so you can see what i told into the video earlier whenever we need to deal with the rows which are coming below the current row we use the lead function and similarly when we are dealing with the rows which are above the current row where we are using the lag function here so you can see we are dealing with the rows which are coming below the current row so let's say i want to calculate time to next station for the very first row here you can see so we need to get some of the rows or one of the row which is below the current row so we'll be using the lead function here so let us use that so what so we'll be seeing here so we use the lead function and on to what column do we need to get the lead function so we need to get the lead function over the timing column and over so you can see there are two different trains so i'll be using the partition by concept so on to what column do i need to partition our data so i need to partition the data on to the basis of the train number column because there are two different train numbers on to basis of which i want to calculate the lead function here so and then we need to provide the order by clause so how do i need to order my data set so i need to order my data set onto the basis of the timing column but because my data set is ordered pre from before it does not matter but let's say my data set was unorganized so that in that cases this order by clause will be helpful so i'll be ordering by timing and that's all and let us see what is the output of which we are getting from here and then from there i'll be proceeding so i'll just execute this code so you can see the next row i'm getting into my previous row the next row i'm getting onto my previous row so similarly it is happening for all the other rows and for the very last station you can see for each of the trains for example 1 2 2 6 to nagpur is the very last station for this particular train and there is no station after this so you can see there is null coming up because that means that there is no station after this particular station and this also makes sense because there is no next station present only so how will be getting this particular data here so but we need to get the difference between the time which is present into this particular column and into this particular column so we'll just be subtracting both the time here so i'll be subtracting my lead function here with the timing column and i'll execute the code here so friends you can see this is throwing an error and it is telling that operand data type time is invalid for subtract operator so we cannot subtract two timestamp into the sql so i mean we can subtract but the mechanism is different so you cannot subtract both the timestamps and get your answer so we need to do certain modifications in our code this is a bit level of advanced concept here and i've made a detailed video on how we can get the difference between two different timestamp into hours minutes and seconds so you can see we want to get a result which is kind of a similar manner so i want to get the difference between the both the timestamps which are mentioned here in terms of hours minutes and seconds we need to do certain modifications in our code here to get that answer so i've done all these modifications from before and i have the code ready with me here if i'll run this particular code the modified code you will get to see i am getting the difference between both the timestamp in terms of hours minutes and seconds so by both i mean the current row and the row which is just next to the current row example if i'll take one of the timestamp i'll just take the example here only so you can see for train number 22863 howda and kharagpur the timestamp difference was 1 hours and 40 minutes let us cross verify here so 22863 howda to kharagpur so you can see the difference is 1 hour and 40 minutes so friends this is how we are using the lead function to get the difference between the current row and the row which is just next to the current row let us see one more example here which we have discussed into our video head so we'll be seeing what is the time which has been elapsed until now so let's say the train is running and it is moving to all these stations so what is the total amount of time which has been elapsed till now so uh, let us say this was the starting point and let us say the train is at balasore so i want to get the difference between the timestamp which is mentioned here in the let's say i'll just mention the balasore timestamp i'll take and i'll subtract this with the timestamp from where the train has started so you can see the time has been elapsed is three hours and two minutes so i want to get uh, this particular column 
so here will not be using the lead function rather i'll be getting the minimum time which is present into the column into the timing column and i'll be partitioning it onto the basis of the train so for example if i'll just partition the data for one of the train here and from this particular partition i'll be getting the minimum value of the timestamp which is present into this particular column so i'll be getting the minimum value here for example let us say this is the minimum value i'll just keep it aside and from this particular minimum value i'll be subtracting all the timestamps which are mentioned here so i'll just paste here and if i'll uh, just copy the same value in all the rows here i'll i'm just trying to show you guys how i'll be getting my output and at the very last i'll be subtracting this particular time by this time and similar thing i'll do for all the other rows and this is how i'll be getting my time which has been elapsed till now for uh, these particular trains so let us see how to do this and here i'll be getting the minimum value of the timestamp to get the minimum value of the timestamp i'll be using the minimum function which is present into the sql so let us see how to do this so here only i'll just copy the code and instead of lead i'll be making this as the minimum column i'll just uh, be re removing this lead and i'll be presenting here minimum timing and let us run the code let us see what is the output which we are getting so we are getting the output in terms of negative numbers so i think we need to write this timing at the last i'll just do this let us rerun the code again and you can see we are getting our answer so wherever we are getting 0 hours 0 minutes and 0 seconds it means that the train has started from that particular station we'll just verify for one of the station here so we just calculated 22863 howrah to kadak uh, 22863 howrah to katak and the time which has been elapsed is 4 hours and 57 minutes so let us see if it is so so you can see 22863 from howrah to katak time which has been elapsed here is 4 hour and 57 minutes so friends you can see we are getting the timestamp value between the both the timestamp in terms of hours minutes and seconds so if i'll be explaining all this concept into much more detail that video will become too long so this video is based on to the lead and the lag function so i don't want to spend time on the other concepts made a detailed video on how to calculate the difference between the times in terms of hours minutes and seconds you can watch that particular video to clear uh, this particular concept of yours so friends let us move to the second example which we have and that particular data set is also very much simple so i'll just present here the data set which i am talking about so i'll just do a select star from tutorial and the data set is runs so here what i have done this is also a real data set which i have captured here from the internet so you can see i have two players virat kohli and rohit sharma and their odi runs into each of these respective years which they have scored and this is the real data i have captured from the internet and onto the basis of this particular data we'll be calculating five different data points which uh, you can see here so friends let us start calculating and these are more or less based onto the lead and lag function only i have tried to focus this video onto the lead and lag function so that it can clear all your concepts and you can solve the advanced level sql problems so the very first thing which we need to calculate here is the total run scored by virat and rohit so friends let us see how to calculate this just be using the player column here and i'll be just be summing up the runs column and i'll be getting from this particular database tutorial runs and at the last i'll just group by our data onto the basis of the player column let us uh, run this particular execute this particular code so you can see we have got the run score the player name and the total runs uh, that has been scored by both of these particular players so i'll just rename the particular column and i'll just execute the code once again so you can see i have got the player name and the runs which has been scored so let us move to the next data point and it is showing which year scored what percentage of runs so you can see i'll just present the entire data set and i'll just show you what is the thing which i want 
so you can see all the runs which has been scored by all these players here in their entire i mean let's say in 2010 rohit has scored five or four runs similarly virat has scored in 2012 1026 runs i want to know what percentage of runs were scored by virat kohli into this particular year out of the entire runs which has been scored by him so let's say he has scored 100 runs and let's say in the year 2012 he has scored 20 runs so that means that into his entire career he has scored 100 runs but 20% of runs have have been scored by him into the year 2012 so if you remember i have made a detailed video on the rows between concept so we'll be using that particular concept into this problem here let us see how to write uh, this particular code to get uh, this answer so i'll just write here select i'll write here player name i'll write here the year i'll write the runs and i'll be getting the percentage value into the next column so let us see how to get that answer so first of all i'll be getting the total runs which has been scored by virat kohli and the rohit sharma and i'll be presenting this number for each row so let us see how to get uh, this answer so i'll be just be doing a sum over runs and over i'll be partitioning my data set onto the basis of the player column and rows between unbounded preceding and bounded following and this column is the total runs column and here i'll be mentioning from which table i want so i'll be getting this data from the tutorials and the table name is runs execute this code okay we need to provide the order by clause so we'll just be ordering our data set on to the basis of the year my bad so i'll just run the code again you can see into the next column i have got the total runs which has been scored by virat kohli and rohit sharma in their entire career i have got uh, this particular answer so if you are confused what does all these terms mean i have made a detailed video into each of these concepts into very detail you can check my advanced sql playlist for learning all these concepts here it was not the answer which we wanted we want to get our answer in terms of percentage term so this is the total which we have got and then we need to divide the run scored into this year by the total runs which have been scored by these players so let us divide the runs which have been scored and i'll be dividing this with the total runs that has been scored and i'll just execute the code again and i'll be multiplying this with 100 to get in terms of percentage and this is in terms of percentage i'll rename the column again let us execute the query here so in each of the row you can see we have got these in terms of percentage value so i'll just explain what does all these value tell for into the year 2018 rohit has scored 11% of his runs what does this 11% number means so out of this total run he which rohit has scored into his entire career 11% of runs were scored by him into the year 2018 so this number depicts that value so the next value which we need to calculate here is the counting of the years into how many years they scored runs less than the previous year so we need to count the total number of years for example let's say the player has scored in 2012 x runs and in 2013 he has scored y runs so we need to count the total number of years in which his performance has been degraded from the previous year and if he has scored less run than the previous year or not and we want to count the number of times this has happened so let us see how to do this so for doing this we need to get uh, the runs which has been scored into the previous year and we'll be subtracting that value by the total runs which have been scored into the current year and we'll be getting a number here let us see and let us get this number and we'll be moving forward from that and what i mean to say here you'll be getting to 
understand much more better way so i'll just delete this particular thing here and now we'll be using the lag function here because we need to get the runs which have been scored into the previous year so let us see this how we'll be getting so i'll be getting lag of runs and over i'll be doing partition by player i'll be ordering by year and that's all and this is the previous year runs let us execute the code so you can see he has started his career in 2008 so by default that means that into the previous year the null value will be present but if we come to the next rows you can see i am getting all the for each of the row i am getting the previous year runs so for example in 2009 the runs which have been scored by rohit in 2008 is 532 and i am getting corresponding to the next column similarly in 2010 the runs scored by rohit is 504 but in 2009 he has scored 102 runs you can see i have got into the next column the total runs which have been scored by the players into the previous year now i'll be subtracting both of these runs like the runs which have been scored into the previous year from uh, this particular year i'll be subtracting both the runs here so i'll just do this and i'll just run the code again execute the code so you can see i'm getting the difference between both the runs and as you can see what is the thing which we wanted so we just wanted to count the number of years or the count the number of times in which the per player performance has been degraded from the previous year and the difference which we are getting is the runs which have been scored into pre the previous year minus the current year runs so if this particular value is positive what does that mean that means that player has scored more runs into the previous year because that is why we are getting a positive value here and if this number is negative that means that the player has scored more runs into this year as compared to the previous year so from this particular column you can see we just want to count the number of positive numbers for each of the players let us see how to do this so i'll just present this into a sub query i'll just provide a variable name here and i'll do a select star and i'll be using the case when so case when previous year runs is a greater than a zero then one else a zero i'll be presenting and i'll be naming this as more runs less runs and i'll be providing a from and from this particular query i want i'll be executing the code you can see onto all these rows wherever i am getting one all those rows a positive number is present into the previous year runs column for example here you can see the number 430 is positive i'm getting one year and similarly the number is negative year minus 402 i'm getting a zero year and i'm getting the same thing for each of the players now from here what do we want to get we want to count the number of years in which the players performance has been degraded from the previous year so one means the player performance has been degraded from the previous year and zero means the player performance has not been degraded so can we say like if we just sum up the more runs less runs column we'll be getting the number or the value for example for rohit if i'll just be summing up onto the basis onto the more runs and less runs column i'll be getting the number of years onto the basis of which the performance of rohit has been degraded from the previous year because the zero won't sum up only the one value would sum up and how many times one is coming we just want to get that particular thing so i'll be doing the similar operation here so i'll be providing this into the bracket 
and i'll be doing a select player comma sum over and i'll be doing here more runs less runs from this and i'll be using the group by function onto the player column to get uh, this number so let us see let us execute the query and you will see for rohit the number is 8 for virat the number is 6 and what does these numbers tell about for example rohit 8 is coming this means that into his entire career 8 number of times rohit has scored runs less than the previous year runs and similarly 6 is coming for virat kohli this means that into his entire career virat kohli has scored less than runs into the current year than as compared to the previous year six times or six number of times we have got our final answer what we wanted let us move to the next thing here so we want to count the number of years in which rohit has scored more runs than virat kohli so i want to get uh, this particular number i want to compare the total runs which have been scored by virat kohli and the runs which have been scored by rohit sharma and i want to compare both these numbers and i want to know how in how many years did virat kohli scored more runs than rohit sharma so let us see uh, let us get this particular number here so i'll just do a select here let us see our data set first okay so i'll just do a select here and i'll present the player name i'll present the year i'll present the runs and here i'll be presenting the lag thing why i'm doing the lag thing or let us say i'll be using the lead thing here and i'll be providing the lead over the runs you will get to know why i'm using the lead function we need to partition our data set and this time i will not be partitioning my data set onto the basis of the player column i will be partitioning my data set onto the basis of the year column because for each year i want a separate partition for all the players so for example for 2008 i want a separate partition for 2009 i'll be wanting a separate partition for 2010 i want a separate partition and into all these partitions i want to compare both the player runs or how many times Rohit has scored more runs in a year than Virat Kohli. So we'll be partitioning our data set onto the basis of the year column. And I'll be ordering my data set onto the basis of the player name let's say. And first of all R is coming so R will come at the top and Virat will be coming at the next row for each of the partitions. And that is why i have just provided the lead function here because we are ordering onto the basis of the player and onto the ascending order so r comes before v so that is why r would come up before and i've used the lead function here and i'll be just be providing a bracket here and i'll just rename this as runs scored by virat and from tutorials dot dot and runs let us execute uh, this particular query here so you can see what is the desired output which i wanted is being displayed here i'll just explain what is this output telling about so all these data set has been partitioned onto the basis of the year column you can see 2008 has been onto a single partition it has been created similarly a partition has been created for 2009 2010 and all the years similarly and let's say i am getting the run scored by rohit in 2008 and the run scored by virat in 2008 i've got into the next column and similarly for the run scored by rohit in 2009 i've got and similarly the run scored by virat kohli in 2009 i've got into the next column and similarly i'm getting for all the other columns here you are seeing i'm getting some null values because i have used the lead function here let us remove the null values from here so select star from this where run scored by virat 
is not null and this will represent a much more clean data that can help you understand it a much more better way so you can see i have got just the runs scored by rohit sharma here into the year runs that has been scored by him and into the next column i am getting the runs scored by virat kohli i am getting here now i'll be subtracting both the numbers here to get my answer so i'll just do that here only so i want to get here runs scored by virat and i'll be subtracting this of the runs scored by rohit sharma so the result which i want to get is the how many years rohit sharma has scored more runs than virat kohli so from this particular number you can see wherever the number into this particular column is positive that means that virat has scored more runs that than rohit sharma because virat is coming before the subtraction sign and wherever the number is positive it is coming that means that virat has scored more runs and whenever the number is coming as a negative that means that rohit sharma has scored uh, the more uh, number of runs into that particular year so let us use the same concept which we have used earlier using the case when statement to count the total number of years in which rohit sharma has scored more runs so i'll do a select star and i'll be using the case when and no column name has been given so i'll just give the column name as diff that is the difference so case when diff is less than 0 that means that rohit has scored more runs than virat kohli else a zero and i'll be ending this as a uh, difference in runs and i'll be getting this from this particular table here i'll execute the code so you can see wherever negative number is present i'm getting one wherever positive number is present i'm ge getting zero negative means rohit has scored more runs than virat kohli so similar concept i'll be using i'll be just be summing up the column which is present here so no other player is here so i'll be just be getting the player name and i'll be providing a sum over difference runs column i'll be providing from i'll be giving a name to the sub query i'll just execute the code okay we just need to group by on to the basis of the player here to see this so you can see into the entire career of rohit sharma only three times he has scored more runs than virat kohli into a calendar year into an entire year so friends you can see i've got this particular value also so i hope you are enjoying uh, this particular lesson so do like this video and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't let us move to the next and the final thing which we need to calculate and this will be much more interesting so the last thing which we need to calculate here is the player run scored in previous year and the next year and the count the number of times in which score is increasing continuously for 3 years so what is the result we want so let's say this is the year 2012 we are considering a row for 2012 here i'll just put take one player so for 2012 so this is the total number of runs which has been scored by virat kohli in 2012 and this is 1026 what is the things which we want so i want to have a column with the previous year runs and similarly i want to have a column which is next year runs and let's say for example this particular row i am considering so what is the total number of runs which has been scored by virat kohli into the previous year so it was 1381 and what is the total number of runs which has been scored by virat kohli into the next year so the next year is 2013 so it is 1268 and i just want to know how many times this has happened that the runs has been continuously increasing continuously for 
थ्री ईयर फॉर ईच ऑफ द प्लेयर सो लेट से फॉर विराट हाउ मेनी टाइम्स दिस हैज हैपन फॉर रोहित हाउ मेनी टाइम्स दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग हैज हैपन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू कैन सी आई वॉन्ट टू गेट दीज टू कॉलम्स ईयर द प्रीवियस ईयर रन कॉलम आई वॉन्ट फॉर ईच ऑफ द रो एंड द नेक्स्ट ईयर रन कॉलम आई वॉन्ट फॉर ईच ऑफ द रो एंड फ्रॉम ईयर ओनली आई एल बी गेटिंग टू नो इफ दिस नंबर इज ग्रेटर दैन दिस नंबर और नॉट एंड सिमिलरली if this particular number is greater than this particular number or not and if both of these are true that would be counted as one so you can see this is not equal to this so it will come as false so that means that it will be counted as zero so this particular year would not be counted because the runs has been not be continuously increasing you can see for the next year in 2013 the runs has been degraded as compared to the previous year so i want to count the number of times this has happened that for the continuously 3 years the runs has been keep on increasing for any player so let us see how to calculate this so i'll just move forward and i'll just write the query so i'll write i'll get the player name i'll get let us execute this and see what is the data set column name so this is player names year runs so first i want to get the let us say i want to get the previous year runs so i'll be using the lag function here so lag over runs and over i'll do partition by because there are two players so i'll be doing a partition on to the basis of to the player name so partition on to the basis of players and i'll be ordering by on to the basis of the year and this is the previous year runs similarly i'll be using the lead function here and i'll be getting the lead for runs over partition by player order by year and this is the next year runs from tutorial dot dot runs and let us execute uh, this particular code here so you can see i've got a previous year column and the next year runs column let us verify some of the numbers if we are getting the correct answer or not so in 2000 let's say 2011 611 runs has been scored by rohit sharma and into the previous year in 2010 5 of 4 runs has been scored by rohit sharma and into the next year 168 runs has been scored by him so we are getting the correct answer so we want to know if the runs has been continuously increasing for all these 3 years or not so let us see how to get uh, this particular answer and i'll be providing this into a sub query here and i'll just do a select star comma case when so case when previous year runs is less than this year runs and also this year runs is less than next year runs then count as 1 else count all the other cases as 0 and as in creasing runs from this let us execute the code so you can see wherever one we are getting the numbers have been continuously increasing wherever one we are getting though we are getting one not many times we are getting one very less number of times but whenever we are getting the runs have been continuously increasing for the three years continuously and we just want to count the number of times this has happened this particular thing has happened for each of the player in their entire career that they have scored the increasing runs their runs have been continuously increasing for continuously 3 years 
so we want to count this particular number so i'll just do a select layer comma sum over increasing runs from and i'll be grouping by because i'm using the sum function so i'll need to group this onto the basis of the player because for each player we want to get this data i'll execute the code so you can see for rohit it was just happened one time into his entire career that he has scored continuously increasing runs for continuously three years but for virat kohli it has happened three times that he has scored continuously increasing runs his runs have been continuously increasing year on year for continuously three years three years back to back so friends this was all into the lead and the lag function so i hope this video was very much useful to you so do practice a lot if you had found this video very much informational so do like this video and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't so meet you in the next video thank you so much bye